starting with the great name of Allah who is the most merciful and beneficent. Uh, Assalamu alaikum my dear listeners. Uh, welcome to Knowledge Syndicate. So uh, in today's lecture we are going to study uh, the use of different uh, auxiliaries and model verbs uh, and use of some of our major conjunctions that are used in our English language. Uh, so uh, let us begin our today's lecture with uses of auxiliaries and models. So uh, we called auxiliary verbs and model verbs as auxiliaries and models. Uh, so starting with uh, auxiliary have. So uh, the word have or the auxiliary have is used uh, in the formation of perfect tenses or perfect tenses uh, we use uh, them uh, we use have in our perfect tenses uh, for example we see that i have cut my finger so uh, here it is a perfect tense uh, so it is a per uh, present perfect tense and here we use have with it uh, the next one is have to is used with the infinitive to indicate obligation. So uh, we can see it from the example that I have to be there by five o'clock. So here have to is used uh, along with our infinitive uh, to uh, indicate obligation. The next one is uh, the past from uh, the past form had to is used to express obligation in the past. Uh, the past form of have is had. So uh, we use had to uh, to express uh, obligation in the past because have is always used in the pre uh, present tenses and had is used in the past tenses. Uh, it is the past form of have. So we will see it from the example that he had to move the furniture himself. So here had to uh, is used as a past form of have and it is uh, to express obligation in the past. Is It is a past tense. The next is in negative and questions have to and had to are used with do, does and did. So um, when uh, we ask certain questions or uh, there comes a negative sentences with uh, uh, do not or didn't. Uh, so we use their have along with do, does or did. Uh, we will see from the example that he didn't have to go. So uh, it is a negative sentence and uh, we use uh, or have with uh, have to along with or uh, did. Uh, it is a negative form. So there comes didn't. Uh, so the next one is do. Uh, do is also used uh, in various forms uh, when see it, uh, we will see it then uh, to form negative and interrogative of simple present and past tenses do is used uh, when uh, the simple present tense or past uh, simple past tense uh, is uh, to be converted in negative sentences or interrogative negative sentences means when there comes ne negative um, like when there comes not and interrogative sentences are question sentence sentences uh, so uh, when we convert simple present tense and simple past tenses into negative into their negative form or into their interrogative form so we put their do uh, we can see it from the example does he work so uh, here uh, we use it as our interrogative sentences. Uh, we can also use that uh, it as uh, he does not work. So it comes as a negative sentence. Uh, so uh, we put not along with uh, does. So the next use is to avoid repetition of a previous ordinary verb. So uh, when we avoid repetition of a verb, uh, which is already mentioned before in the sentence, so to avoid that repetition, uh, we put do there. For example, he eats fish and so do you. So uh, here do is our uh, it you is used to avoid the repetition uh, of our uh, verb eats. So uh, to avoid this repetition of our ordinary verb that is already mentioned before in the sentence we use do. The next one is used to emphasize the affirmative nature of a statement. When uh, we use it, do is also used uh, to emphasize uh, the nature of a statement, uh, major uh, affirmative nature of a statement. So uh, we can see that you do look pale. So uh, you do look pale here. It is emphasizing uh, the nature uh, of affirmative sentence like you look pale is simple sentence. But when we put do along with that, you do look pale. So we are emphasizing our statement. Uh, the next one is in the imperative uh, do makes a request or invitation. So uh, do is also used in um, imperative sentences uh, to uh, make a request or invitation. For example, we can see that do be quiet. So uh, here do is uh, used as a request like do be quiet. So uh, we use it uh, in imperative sentences. 
the next one are uh, can could uh, may or might so can is related to could and may is related to might so uh, how we use them so uh, we will go through them now uh, can usually expresses ability or capacity so uh, when we uh, use to express uh, the ability certain ability or capacity or in a sentence or capacity of anything in a sentence so we put uh, can uh, over there we can see it from the example that uh, I can swim across the river. So uh, here I can swim across the river. So can uh, is used uh, to express the ability that I can swim. So uh, here we are going to express our ability swim. So we use can over there. The next one is can and may are used to express permission. Uh, may is rather formal. So can and ca may are also used to express permission when we are asking someone for certain permissions. So we use can and may there. So uh, may is often uh, used in a formal way. So uh, we can say that you can go now. So it is informal. Like when we say you may go now, so it becomes formal in certain way. Uh, the next one is may is used to express possibility in, in affirmative sentences. Uh, can is used in the corresponding interrogative and negative sentences. So uh, may is used to express possibility in affirmative sentences. Uh, and uh, in its corresponding, we can see when we uh, make the negative or interrogative of affirmative sentences, we use their uh, can. We can see it from the example, it may rain tomorrow. So uh, here we may is used uh, as a possibility. Uh, we are uh, just uh, giving our thought that it may rain tomorrow. And uh, on the corresponding interrogative sentences uh, or negative sentences along with these, uh, we put can over there. So it cannot be true. So uh, it, is, it is also a kind of possibility, but the possibilities that come under negative sentences or interrogative sentences, we put there can. Uh, and in uh, our affirmative sentences, we put there uh, may. So uh, we can see uh, the next one. Uh, in very formal English, may is used to express a wish. So in formal English, or we can say that in modern English, uh, we, uh, the word may is used to express a wish. Uh, we can see it from the example, may you live a long and happily. So uh, here may is used as a wish. Like we are wishing someone that may you live long. So uh, we are using it as a wish. Uh, it is rather used in formal English. May is rather, may, the word may basically is used in formal English or in uh, modern English. The next one is could and might are used as the past equivalents of can and may. So uh, could and might are basically, uh, can and may are used in our present tenses and could and might are used in our uh, past tenses. For example, we can see that he said I might go or he said I could go. So uh, this is our past tense and uh, could and might is used in our past tenses. The next one is shall, uh, should, will or would. And shall is related to should, will is related to would. So uh, shall is used in the first person and will in all person to express the pure future. So uh, one uh, foremost thing uh, in this auxiliaries uh, is that they are used in future tenses. We cannot use them in present or past tenses. Shall uh, and will are only used in our future tenses. To express our future tense, we use their shall and will. Okay, we will see it from the example that uh, I shall be 25 next birthday or I will be 25 next birthday. Uh, shall, uh, shall is rather used in first person when we are do, uh, donating our first person. So it, uh, we use shall over there. But when we are uh, denoting our all persons, so there we use will with them. So the next one is shell is sometimes used in the second and third person to express a command, promise or threat. So uh, shell is also used as a second person uh, pronoun and uh, it is used to express or command any, so any command, uh, certain promises or when we are going to threat someone. So there we use shell with them. For example, uh, we say that he shall not enter my house again. So here we are commanding and we use shell with them that he shall not enter my house again. So the next one is question with shell. I, uh, I, we are used to ask the will of the person addressed. So uh, shall I or shall we is used uh, to ask a question or uh, to ask the will of the person. Like when we, we, are, we are addressing certain person uh, to ask their will or to ask their permission. Uh, we use shall I or shall we. Shall I with singular and shall we with plural. 
uh, to ask their will. So for, for example, we see it from the example, shall I open the door? So uh, shall I, here we are uh, asking for the will of the person we are addressing to that shall I open the door? Uh, the next one is should and would are used as the past equivalents of shell and will uh, as same uh, with the uh, same is the case with uh, could and might uh, so should and would are the past equivalents of uh, or uh, shell and will uh, we can see from the example i expected i should get a first class so i should uh, here should is our uh, past equivalent of word shell so uh, here we are done with our uh, these uh, shell and would shell uh, would, should will and would uh, the next one is uh, must or ought to uh, so uh, must is used to express necessity or obligation when we are expressing certain necessity or obligation we put there must uh, we will see from the example that you must improve your spelling so here you must uh, it is a necessity that uh, you must improve your spelling the next one is must can also express logical certainty when we are going to express certain logical uh, certainty so there we put must for example uh, she must have let already so here she must uh, here we are uh, expressing our logical certainty or to expresses moral obligation or desirability uh, when we express certain desire that what we desire or uh, moral obligation like what is uh, morally true so what we have to morally do that like it is a moral obligation so uh, there we put ought to uh, we will see from the example that we ought to love our neighbors so it is a moral obligation that we ought to love our neighbors that it is important that we should love our neighbors so there we put ought to the next one is ought to can also be used to express probability uh, to express certain probabilities we put there ought to uh, we will see it from the example that this book ought to be very useful so uh, it is a probability that it might be very useful so might is not the correct word for this uh, sentence so there we put this book ought to be very useful because we are expressing a probability uh, that it might be very it, it may be very useful so there we put ought to Okay, the next one is uh, used to need or dare. Uh, these are our uh, auxiliaries. The word, the auxiliary used to expresses a discontinued habit. Like uh, there is a certain habit in the past, but now it is discontinued. So uh, to express certain discontinued habits or activities, we put there uh, used to. For example, I used to live there when I was a boy. So it is a discontinued activity. I used to live there when I was a boy. So it was in past. It was a past habit that I lived there. Uh, but now I didn't live there. So uh, we put there, I used to live there when I was a boy. The next one is the auxiliary need uh, denoting necessity or obligation can be conjugated with or with or without do. So uh, when uh, we use need along with uh, with uh, with uh, along with do or without do uh, so uh, when need is uh, you like when we uh, conjugated need with do so uh, we denote certain necessities or obligations uh, for example he needs not to go so here uh, he uh, need uh, not to go so uh, it is a, a necessity we can say it is, it is a kind of necessity or it is a kind of obligation that he need not to go so uh, the auxiliary need is also used in this manner. Uh, the next one is the auxiliary dare is generally used in negative and interrogative sentences. So dare is used uh, in negative negative sentences as I've told you before. Negative sentences are those, those sentences in which there comes not and interrogative sentences are our question sentences. Uh, for example, he dare not to do it. So uh, he dare is generally used in negative sentences. So here it is a negative sentence along with not. So he dare not to do it. So uh, here we are done with our uses of certain uh, auxiliaries and models. Now moving towards uh, our uh, uses of uh, some of our uh, major conjunctions. So um, number one is since. Since is our conjun conjunction. Uh, since is used from and after the time. Like when we say that uh, we uh, are using it as uh, from and after the time when uh, we are mentioning some time like from this to this. So uh, there we put since, uh, since for example when we say I have been in such a pickle since I saw you lost, last. So uh, since means from and after this time. 
the next is seeing that when uh, seeing that in such is in as much as so uh, when we are uh, expressing this term in as much as so we put there since for example since you wish, wish it uh, it shall be done the next one is or uh, so or is used uh, to introduce an alternative uh, when um, when we are uh, like when we are putting in a sentence the alternative of one another so we put or there for example uh, you must work or you starve so it is an alternative that you must wor work or you starve the next one is to mean otherwise like when we uh, when we put uh, like when we didn't put otherwise in a sentence so uh, at the equivalent of otherwise we put or there uh, for example we must hasten or night will overtake us so otherwise we, like we can write it uh, in this manner that we must hasten uh, otherwise night will overtake us to like to mean otherwise we put there or the next one is as nearly equivalent to so, uh, for example, when we say that the troops were not wanting in strength or courage, like they are equivalent strength or courage, they are two equivalent terms. So, uh, to uh, set uh, like to separate them, we put or uh, in between them. The next one is if. If is used on the condition or supposition that like uh, there is a condition that this or if this. So, uh, we put there if in a uh, on the condition. For example, if he is there. I shall see him. So it is a condition that if he is there, I shall see him. So it is a kind of condition. So in certain conditions, we put if there. The next one is admitting that. So uh, when uh, we are admitting certain uh, things, so we put if there. If I am poor, yet I am honest. Like I am admitting that I am poor, uh, but uh, if I am poor, yet I am uh, honest. Like if I am poor, that I am honest also. So we are admitting certain things. So we put there if. The next one is used as whether or whenever. So instead of whether or whenever we can use if uh, like in whether we can see. I asked him if he would help me. So here if is used as whether. So it this sentence can also be written as if uh, I asked him whether he could help me. So instead of whether we put there if. Uh, and in sense of whenever we can use it as uh, if I feel any doubt I inquire. So uh, here we are using it as a it as whenever so like we can say that whenever i feel doubt i inquire so instead of whenever uh, we put there if if i feel any doubt i inquire the next one is uh, that uh, that is used uh, to express a reason or cause when we are expressing certain reason or cause so we put there that for example he was annoyed that he was contradicted so uh, it is a reason or it is a cause that he was uh, annoyed that he was contradicted. The next one is to express a purpose when we are expressing certain purpose and uh, or we can say that uh, it is equivalent to in order that. So we put there uh, that for example, we saw that we may reap. The next one is uh, to express a consequence, result or ex uh, or effect. Like when there comes certain result or certain effect or certain uh, consequences. So it, to express those things we put there. Uh, the. For example, we can see that he was so tired that he could scarly stand. So uh, here we put the. It is an effect that he was so tired so that he could uh, scarcely stand. The next one is then. Uh, then as a conjunction, it follows adjective and, and adverb in comparative degree. Uh, like when we uh, certain adjective, the, the comparative we use then in uh, the comparative degrees of certain adjective and certain uh, adverb. For example, we can see that wisdom is better than rubies or we can see that I see you oftener than I see him. So th then is used in certain manner. The next one is while. Uh, while is used during the time that as long as so instead of as long as we put there while for example we can see that while there is life there is hope so as long as there is a life there is a hope so instead of as long as we put there while uh, the next one is at the same time when we are denoting some things at the same time at the point or at the spot so we put there uh, like when we are mentioning two things at the same time they are happening at the same spot so we put there while uh, for example we can see that uh, the girls sang while the boys played so the the girls sang and the boys played these are two uh, things that are happening at the same time or at the same spot so we put while in between them that like, where the girls sang while the boys played the next one is used as whereas so instead of whereas we also use while 
Uh, for example, while this is true of some, it is not true at all. Like we can say that whereas this is true of some, it is not true at all. So instead of whereas, we use while there. The next one is only. Uh, only as a conjunction means except them. Like when we are saying that except them, so we use only over there. Uh, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Only the next one is except. It was once in good use as a conjunction. Uh, it was used as a conjunction like except a man be born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom again. So unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So instead of unless we use the except. The next one is without. Uh, as a conjunction it means unless. Uh, it is not now used in modern English. Uh, so, uh, but rather we will study it as a conjunction means unless. So instead of unless we use without, for example, I shall not go without you. Or we can say that I shall not go unless you come. So instead of unless we use without that I, I shall not go without you do. So, uh, or uh, here we are done with our uh, uses of conjunction. Uh, hope you guys are clear. And if there is any ambiguity, you can ask me in comment section. Uh, and the upcoming video uh, or upcoming lecture will be of same words used as different parts of speech how uh, various words are used uh, in different parts of speech uh, how they are related to different parts of speech so we will go through them in the upcoming video stay tuned for the upcoming lecture uh, thank you like share comment subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon thank you